But let's be honest, the Jets are probably not interested in drafting a quarterback early this year. But I think they should be, and I'll explain why on today's episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, April 21st, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Subscribe to this podcast on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts for free so that you'll get new episodes as soon as they are posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These help the channel out and help other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Today, our episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. It's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NFL60 and use code NFL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. We are less than one week away from the start of the NFL draft. It begins next Thursday night. A week from tonight will be one of the most exciting nights of the year, which will be day two of the draft. The Jets currently own picks 42 and 43 in the second round. They do not currently have a third round pick. And today we're talking draft. We're talking draft strategy above everything else. The Jets are probably going to have Aaron Rodgers play quarterback for them next season. But what happens in 2024 and beyond? And I think that heading into this draft, the odds of the Jets taking a quarterback in the early rounds, round one, round two, even round three, probably pretty low. And I think the mindset is that we've got Aaron Rodgers this year. At least we're going to trade for him. We'll see whether that actually happens or not. I, th- I still think it's going to happen. But the Jets are, seem pretty set that they are eventually going to have Aaron Rodgers, probably at some point in the next, I don't know, seven days or so. But I think this through, and I wonder, why should the Jets not be interested in drafting a quarterback this year? Because First of all, the draft's a long-term proposition. But second of all, let's think about what we just went through with Zach Wilson and what the team has told us. Because the Jets' own words suggest to us that they should probably be thinking about drafting a quarterback this year. The Jets, a lot of the decision makers have said, we made a mistake in 2021 not bringing in a veteran who could start over Zach Wilson. Now, I think they probably take that statement a little bit too far because in 2021, let's say hypothetically the Jets had Teddy Bridgewater. Let's say... Uh, the Jets uh, threw, let, let's say Carolina threw Bridgewater into the Sam Darnold trade, so the Jets got him back as their veteran stopgap for Zach Wilson. Now look through the schedule that year. Let's say Bridgewater starts the first five games, and then the Jets had their bye, an early bye that season. Let's say Zach Wilson steps into the lineup after the bye for game six. Do you really think that would have made a substantial difference in Zach Wilson's career? I do not. I think Zach Wilson was overdrafted. I think if you could do it all over again, you would not have drafted him second overall. You know, Knowing what we know now, it looks like it was a pretty big mistake. It looks like it was a misevaluation, and you know, we can we don't need to relitigate it. But Zach Wilson, of course, his final season in college broke out, but it was also that year where BYU did not have a very difficult schedule. There were some pretty big flaws that were on the film that you never know. You know, it's, sometimes it got, everybody's got flaws, and the question is whether whether they can overcome them. Zach Wilson could not. So I think that the statement's over overblown. I think the Jets actually take it a little bit too far because I don't think having a veteran stopgap was going to make a difference for Zach Wilson or not. But their point is still well taken. And even at the time, I was questioning questioning a little bit, why are you putting all your eggs in the Zach Wilson starting from day one basket? Well, if the Jets draft a quarterback this year, their eggs are not all in that basket. In fact, their quarterback at least if everything goes to plan and you don't suffer any injuries, would not even need to see the field. So this would be a more drastic measure where your quarterback would come in and essentially have no pressure in year one because you're expecting Aaron Rodgers to start. And of course, an injury could change that. There are plenty of things that could change that, but you'd be drafting somebody with the idea of developing him on the sideline, which is not a concept the Jets have used in recent years with their young quarterbacks outside of you know Christian Hackenberg, who never even got on the field, and later round picks like Bryce Petty. If you go back to 2009, Mark Sanchez, a first-round pick, Geno Smith, a second-round pick, Sam Darnold, a first-round pick, Zach Wilson, a first-round pick, all four of them were day-one starters for this team. You know They have not taken an approach where they've tried to foster a young quarterback, they've tried to let him grow slowly, learn at his own pace. It's not something that's happened. Now, a couple caveats here. First of all, I am not saying the Jets need to draft a quarterback at any cost. 
that's different from what I'm saying. I'm saying that if the board lines up that where you are picking a quarterback is a good value, then you should consider picking him. That does, that's different from saying Jets should draft a quarterback no matter what. So I want to rebut that argument before it is even made. I am not saying unconditionally the Jets should draft a quarterback. I am not saying the Jets should trade up for a quarterback. I look at the quarterbacks around this year, and I think you know when we're talking about trading up, it's how much do you want to risk on them? And I don't know that I would necessarily want to risk everything on any of these guys by trading up. And that's you have to give up a lot to trade up. It obviously depends on how far these quarterbacks fall, but I'm not saying trade up. I'm saying that if somebody happens to be there, don't rule him out because he's a quarterback. I think right now the mindset among a lot of fans, and perhaps even the Jets, is we're not taking a quarterback no matter what. We will rule you out because you're a quarterback. I'm saying consider a quarterback because you're going to need somebody for the long run. And this is the situation that you yourself, Jets, just told us you're trying to create, where you don't need to put a quarterback on the field day one. I mean, this is what Woody Johnson told us with you know, with all of Woody's football insight. So you guys just told us that we want a quarterback to sit early in his career. So here's your opportunity to have a quarterback sit. Now, the other thing I, I will say is I'm not – if – like, let's say Will Levis from Kentucky falls to 13. If you happen to not like Will Levis, if you happen to think, you know, he's too inconsistent, you know, the accuracy hasn't been there enough, that's an argument against the player. I'm saying that the argument against the position itself just doesn't add up to me. So it's one thing to argue, okay, Anthony Richardson, he's a guy who's a project. Maybe he's a little bit too much of a project for me, you know, if he falls to 13. We're we're not going to take him because of that. You draft, you, you scout the player. You don't scout the position. That's the issue that I'm taking with a lot of the analysis around the Jets right now is people are ruling it out outright. They're just saying we can't take a quarterback. Well, why can't you take a quarterback? Aren't you, don't you want to find somebody? Look, Aaron Rodgers is a stopgap. Even if Aaron Rodgers goes out and does well, he's going to be here one year, two years at the most. You want to be able to hit the ground running. You don't want to be in two years and be back to square one. If you can draft somebody this year, and again, I'm not saying you have to, but if you can draft somebody this year and have that guy ready to take over the way, you know, Green Bay was ready for Aaron Rodgers to take over when they let Brett Favre go in 2008, or the way Green Bay hopes Jordan Love is ready to take over now, and you don't have to scramble to, f- to find the replacement, it puts you in better shape. Because after Brett Favre retired in 2009, the Jets were scrambling, and they ended up having to trade up for Mark Sanchez, and obviously that did not work out that great, even despite the early team success in Sanchez's career. You would, like to, you would have liked to have had the answer already on the roster, and obviously the answer for to replace Aaron Rodgers is not on the roster right now, unless you happen to be one of the last believers that Zach Wilson's going to use this time on the bench to turn things around. So I think the Jets should absolutely be interested in the quarterback. And I know some people will say, well, why would you draft Aaron Rodgers as a replacement when you can draft somebody who can help him? It's a valid point, but you know, I've spent the off season saying the Jets are all in because they've got Aaron Rodgers. Of course you're all in if you have a 39 year old quarterback, but at some point you have to look at what the Jets have done this off season and say, you know what? Maybe that's not true. It seems logical to me that if you're going to give up resources and pay a quarterback who's 39 years old $60 million that you'd be going all in. We haven't really seen the Jets go all in, though. They really have. It's not so much that they've made bad moves. It's just they haven't really made any moves. I mean, they've signed a couple depth receivers. They've signed a couple depth offensive linemen. They made a trade for okay safety. I mean, they really haven't made any. They're not all in. They've made essentially, I mean, the... The offseason is going to be Aaron Rodgers in the draft this year. I, mean, I don't know if this is a team that, I think at some point you have to be realistic and you have to say, you know, this is probably not a Super Bowl team. So I think, you know, in the balance between thinking long-term and thinking short-term, maybe you maybe you move back to, to thinking, thinking long-term because they just haven't made the moves that would get them to the top of the league. And it's, so maybe you do have to think longer term. And, you know, again, Aaron Rodgers, we know he's going to be a short-term solution. So, if you, if you want to be able to hit the ground running when Rodgers retires. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast. We'll continue this draft discussion. I'll give you another thought uh, about what the Jets should do in the draft. Normally, I'm against drafting a running back early. I don't know that the Jets will draft a running back early, but there's one guy I have my eye on, and I'll make an exception for him. I'll explain why as we continue this Friday episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Built Bar. We are all waiting with anticipation for what is to come. There's lots of drama. There's a lot of mystery. You may think I'm talking about the NFL draft next week. Who will the Jets take? Will the Aaron Rodgers trade finally get done? And yeah, that's true. But you should also know that something exciting is coming to Built.com tomorrow, April 22nd. 
I don't, I don't have all the details yet, but the excitement is real, and it's something you won't want to miss. If you know how Built works, they have the most incredible protein bars in the world, and they do these amazing flavor drops with unreal flavors in limited quantity. So mark your calendars for tomorrow and head to Built.com on Saturday, April 22nd to be one of the first to discover what the hype is about. I can't wait to see what this new flavor is. And make sure to use promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off your order on whatever this delicious new flavor is. Again, this promo code LOCKEDON15. It's one word with no space. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, number one, number five, for 15% off your order at Built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listen every day. We're talking NFL draft. It's less than a week away. We've spent the offseason really focused on a trade that still hasn't happened yet, but Jets are going to be able to add some good young players next weekend. You know, It's probably not going to be as good as the 2022 class, where the Jets, of course, had four of the top 40 picks. Although they do have three of the top 42 picks this year. One of the challenges, though, is, first of all, the type of draft class you had last year is not typical. And it's not, that's not even so much a thing about the caliber of your GM. It's just unusual that you hit on that many picks, even when you have that many early picks. The Jets did a great job last year. It's going to be tough to do it again. The other challenge is just this year's draft class is viewed as not that deep. It's not that good. You know, maybe that's wrong. You know, sometimes these, project, these projections prove out to be incorrect. It's very difficult to evaluate draft prospects, but in general, the consensus seems to be that this is not a great draft class. And it's you can see it even in the, some of the prospects who get mentioned. These are guys who have some question marks to them, and some of them are physical. You know, Bryce Young, a shorter quarterback who could very well go high in the draft. Um, you know, Peter Skronsky, a guy I like a lot, the tackle out of Northwestern, who kind of has short arms, kind of an outlier. Kalijah Kansi, a defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh. These are guys who are getting a lot of buzz. I don't know that they'd be getting a lot of buzz in a normal year, because in a normal year, the prospects would be more complete. You have guys who both have the physical tools, all the physical tools, all the traits you're looking for, and, you know, a pretty proven repertoire of uh, techniques. And this year, this year you have a lot of guys who could pan out, but they have more question marks than your typical class. And that's one of the things that makes me feel like it's not, it would not be a bad thing for the Jets to make an exception and draft a running back in the first round. Normally, I would be all out on a running back at 13, but you have to adapt to the circumstances in front of you. And the circumstances in front of you for the Jets right this year is there is a lack of quality at the top of this draft class. So maybe there's a game-changing back, and it's B. John Robinson out of Texas. If you've watched him in college, you probably came away impressed. And I look at it, I look at it this way. There, Jets are going to have 39-year-old quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. How are they going to protect him? Well, one way would be to build up the offensive line. And there's a path forward if you get you know one of the good tackles at 13. You know, it could be Skaronsky, it could be Broderick Jones out of Georgia, it could be you know, Wright, it could be Paris Johnson out of Ohio State. There are tackles out there, but you don't, you never know how a guy's going to react to moving from college to the NFL. Lots of guys get a lot of hype, and it doesn't pan out for them. And even a lot of guys who are good, they're not good early. It takes maybe it takes some time for them to adjust to the NFL. The other question is, can you get a center in the second round? We actually did a show yesterday where we focused on the center position. You should, you know, all you everydayers who listen to the show five days a week know this. Um, Michael John Schmidt out of Minnesota, Joe Tipman out of Wisconsin. A couple of guys were intriguing in the second round, but there's no guarantee they're going to be there. And again, there's always some projection. To get two day one starters who are really good right off the bat, not easy to do. You, you essentially would try would be, would be trying to replicate 2006 when the Jets drafted DeBrickashaw Ferguson early in the first round, Nick Mangold late in the first round, and both of them stepped in and played well right off the bat. Both of them were day one starters and helped fortify an offensive line. Yeah, if you can get two day one starters, it changes everything, but it may not be so easy to do. So how do you protect Aaron Rodgers? Well, one way is through having a great run game. You know, if you, and if you can't if you can't run block, then get great backs. The Jets have one great back in Brees Hall, but of course he's coming off a pretty serious injury. I don't know. I think he's going to be on a pitch count early in the season. I don't think he's a guy you want to lean on, at least in the September, October portion of 2023. Maybe as we get to November, December, and he's looking a little bit more like himself, feeling a little bit more like himself, he can start to you know ride his legs a little bit more. But you, I think early on in the season, he will be on a pitch count, and he should be on a pitch count. And if you add a second back here, and I know running back's a low-value position for most NFL teams, but most teams don't wouldn't have a backfield like Bijan Robinson and Brees Hall. There are a handful of backs still in today's NFL that can make a big difference. And I think the Jets have one of them, and they may be able to get a second one in Bijan Robinson. And if you can do that and you can establish a run game, it's going to make life a lot easier on Aaron Rodgers because it's less he's going to be exposed back there. He's not going to have to sit back in the pocket 50 times a game 
and deliver accurate passes under pressure with a shaky offensive line. If you have two running backs who you can just ha- have them turn around, hand them the ball a couple times a game and just have them break off big plays. It's going to make Aaron Rodgers' life easier. It's going to leave him less exposed because you will be able to run the ball more effectively. It's a passing league, no question about it, but there are still backs in this league who can carry an offense on their back. And I think that that could be you know one of those situations where the Jets zig while the rest of the league zags. I think that that's a good team-building approach. I think one of the reasons running backs is not a valuable position in this league. It's viewed as one, maybe the lowest value position. You know, part of it's that it's not that hard to find a guy who's competent at the backfield. But the other part is that there just are not many guys who can carry or an offense, carry the load on offense. And you get these guys. You know, if you if you ever produced a duo like this, what I'm talking about with Robinson and uh, Brees Hall, it would make life so much easier on Garrett Wilson, and it would help kind of help out a receiving core that needs a lot of, needs a lot of help behind Garrett Wilson because there really are no guys who can take pressure off Garrett Wilson right now there are some depth players there are guys who bring certain elements to this team you know Alan Lazard's a bigger guy Miko Hardman has speed but they're not consistent and if the other team's focused on stopping the run it means it's going to be a lot more favorable matchups for, for Garrett Wilson it's going to mean that he'll be able to operate without being the focal point of the defense and it's the type of thing that will make Aaron Rodgers better because everybody's going to be focused on, on the run, which means you'll get a lot of one-on-ones on the outside. Teams will probably have to play man more frequently. makes it a little bit easier to have, uh, to play quarterback, especially if you have a Garrett Wilson who can create separation. It's just the type of thing that can lift the offense up. And I look at this, and of course you can draft a tackle, and I think that there are some tackles who are very worthy of the 13th overall pick. But I have to say that in a normal year, I would probably have questions about drafting a running back at 13, because as great as Brees Hall was last year, you have to remember, he was not a top 15 pick. The Jets were able to get a great back in the second round, and that's not uncommon. A lot of the great backs fall to the end of the first round, early second round, that range. So normally, even if you want to get a great back, you don't have to wait. You you don't have to go that early. You can wait a little bit longer. This year could be an exception, though. So I would not have a big problem with that if the Jets decided to go running back, at least that, that specific running back, B. John Robinson, in the first round. But of course, a lot of the attention is on Aaron Rodgers. When is this trade finally going to be complete? Well, I'll give you my latest theory on this. I've been wrong on get, trying to guess this stuff over the last month or so, but I actually do think that there's a target date that could be significant. It's a week from today, and I'll explain why as we continue this Friday episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Friday. We're talking about the upcoming NFL draft, but of course, it wouldn't be an episode of Locked On Jets unless we talked about Aaron Rodgers. I've tried to get away from it a little bit this week because I think everybody's just tired of hearing about Aaron Rodgers until the trade is done, but we're heading into the NFL draft week, and this deal's still out there. And there are now these rumors that San Francisco is getting involved, and I can't figure out exactly what the genesis of these rumors was. Because it kind of seems like some teams reached out to San Francisco just to inquire about Trey Lance's availability. And for whatever reason, that's led to people somehow thinking that that means because not San Francisco did not reach out to anybody else about Trey Lance, according to reports. It's other teams reached out to San Francisco. And somehow people are connecting dots that that means that the 49ers are going to swoop in and get Aaron Rodgers. And anything's possible. And quite frankly... San Francisco would be a logical destination for Rodgers because that is a team that's a quarterback away. That's a team that has question marks at quarterback because you don't know what you have in Trey Lance. Brock Purdy may or may not be healthy for this season. Jimmy Garoppolo is now in Las Vegas. So that actually would be a pretty logical spot. That actually would be a team that would make sense on a one-year rental because they have a team that can win a Super Bowl this year if they have the right quarterback play. And they may need just a fill-in quarterback for this year until Brock Purdy gets healthy. So that's actually a logical spot. But... That said, there's really nothing concrete that suggests Aaron Rodgers is going to San Francisco. So, as I have been saying, the Jets, the longer this plays out, are giving themselves more and more of an opportunity for something to go wrong for another team to enter the picture. But there's really not been any sort of real indication beyond these rumors that that's a likely or even possible outcome at the moment. So, I still stay, stay, stay calm. But... When will this trade be done? And my target date right now, and I could be wrong. And listen, if they do this, if they do this deal over the weekend, you can thank me because I, I guarantee you it's because I because I'm about to say this. I bet you the deal is going to get done over the weekend. But my target date's a week from now. And why do I say that? Well, the Packers seem to be really dug in on getting the 13th overall pick, so the Jets are going to make the 13th overall pick on Thursday night, or at least if they don't trade out. You know, maybe maybe they'll trade down. But suffice it to say. 
the Jets are not going to give Green Bay the 13th overall pick in this trade. And if they do, then we are going to have a very unhappy podcast the day after that. Because there is, I, I've said it over and over, you every day or so listen every day, you, you know this. The Jets are the only team interested. They're taking on a bad contract. Packers have to get rid of him. Packers don't want to bring him back. Why would you give up? Why would you give up your best asset in these situa- in this cir- circumstance? It's supply and demand. There's no other demand for him. So why do I have to pay a premium? Why? Because the Packers are afraid that they're going to get criticized in the media and their, by their fan base. Well, that's their problem. Jet, the Jets didn't sign Rodgers to this bad contract. It's not the Jets' job to bail Rod to bail the Packers out of a bad contract. Not the Jets' job to bail the Packers out of a mistake. It'd be ridiculous. So. The Packers, I think, may hold on to this dream that they're getting the first the first round pick for another week. But once the Jets make the pick, it's pretty clear that's off the table. Then we get to Friday. The Jets have pick 42. They have pick 43. Packers, you know if they can't get the 13th pick, they're going to want at least one of those two picks. Well, suddenly the clock's going to be moving on this. Suddenly, there's going to be a limit to the amount of time Green Bay has because... Those picks are getting made on, whether it's by the Jets or another team, those picks are getting made on Friday night in the second round. So the Packers really want to be left standing at the end of this thing without a pick, without making this deal by the draft, by settling for 2024 picks. It's possible. And I've, I've laid out those scenarios in the past. I've explained why I think maybe Green Bay would be okay with it. First of all, the better depth, the better quality of next year's draft class, at least projected. There's also the matter that you know their coach and GM are probably going to be there next year. Jets coach and GM may not be, so it could be a situation where it works out well for everybody just to trade future picks, because Jets, Jets need to load up this year, save people's jobs, Packers' jobs are secure, maybe they'll take the long approach, they'll play the long game, and they'll just focus on the future, they'll say, you know what, these picks will be more valuable in the future, that could be a solution out of this, but it's also possible the Packers just want to be done with this, it's also possible the Packers just want to get and want to make picks this year, it's possible the, Jet, the Packers want to put as many pieces around their new quarterback as, as they can, so if that's the case, then I think next Friday could be the target day, and maybe we'll finally have a resolution to this Rodgers thing. It certainly has gone on for long enough. We're over a month. Did you know we're, this week we passed the one-month anniversary of Rodgers' appearance on the Pat McAfee show saying he wanted to come to the Jets? And this thing hasn't been resolved yet. It's been one of the weirder off-seasons in history, but it's on the verge of coming to an end, and next week is the draft. And we will talk next week on Draft Week. There's going to be a lot to discuss, and it's a very exciting time of year. But for today, that's all. This has been the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoyed the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. Big thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube for this episode. These things help Lockdown Jets out, help other Jets fans find us. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll be back next week to talk more Jets.